Well, thank you uh, for joining us. This is our Wednesday night teaching and prayer. And uh, I am not Mike Cowan. I am Chris Lister. And uh, just a little joke for him. He gets the night off, I guess. He's not here tonight. So um, if he watches that later, he'll hopefully he'll laugh. Uh, but I just thank you for tuning in. And I just, before I get started, tonight I want to talk about the acts of kindness. And the Lord's really been speaking to me about that. Um, bef- but before I start, I want to s- I want to tell you something that I've seen um, here lately. Even when I came to church tonight, um, for those of you who don't know, we're in a strip mall, um, and we have all these different buildings, and there's some other churches as well. And I saw people coming in, and I was like, are they coming to our church or that church? So there's three different churches going on right now, which is awesome. It's amazing, right? We're taking ground, and we're pushing the devil back. Amen? All right. So, and I saw this guy, and I was like, are you blessed? And he just, he looked sad, and I was like, well, if he's coming here, I'm going to encourage him. Anyways, he was going somewhere else, and he looked sad, and I was like, are you blessed? And he's like, yeah. I was like, are you serving God? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, you're blessed then, right? And he goes, yeah. And I'm thinking, well, your face is not showing it. Like, bro, <laughs> you know, if you got Jesus, something's got to be manifest. Anyways, so, but, about, but I've been noticing in this, there's a lot of um, tension, a lot of stress, People are going through a lot of stuff, and I get it. Like, if, if you're in the world and you don't have Jesus, I get it, right? That's why we're here, to help those people. But if you have the Lord, come on. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen? I just felt the power of God, so I know God's with me right now. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So why are Christians walking around like this? I'm like, what is going on? So I just want to encourage you, if you're going through something, Or if you're watching online and you're watching this and you're going through something, I just want to encourage you. I wrote this down. um, I was in the shower. I jumped out, wrote this down real quick. Janet was there to attest to that. I was like, uh, the Lord said, you have to know that we win. Amen. And the other thing is, you have to know without a shadow of doubt that God is with us. How many know that God is a winner? Okay. Yeah. God doesn't lose. God is a winner. God of the universe is inside of us. So I want to encourage you, if you're going through something, remember, God is within you. God is with us, and we're going to win. Amen? I wrote this down. Nothing is impossible with God. Can I say that again? Nothing is impossible with God. No matter what comes our way, God is with us. So right now, I pray in the name of Jesus, I command stress to go in the name of Jesus. If you're watching this and you're stressed, I bind that stress right now and I speak the peace of God into your home right now. And the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So walk in it, bind that stress, bind that depression, bind that brain fog, command it to go, speak to it, it's real, command it to go and command the peace of God to come to your home. In Jesus' name. All right, I'm not sure who that was for, but I had to get that out. All right, so tonight, I want to talk about the acts the acts of kindness. So the other day, I was on a plane, and I was sitting down. And you know how it is when you're on a plane. You know, you're like squish, and the steward is coming by and like bumping you. Like, you know, you're trying to like get yourself together, and you're trying to pray. And then all of a sudden, the steward is like, punch, you know, I don't know what it is. Like, it's almost like they go down the aisle and hit you on purpose. I, I, I you know, hadn't been, been on a plane before. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so I always get the end because I'm like long-legged. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm just getting there and I'm praying. And I just shot up a quick prayer to the Lord. I was like, Lord, uh, I had just talked to Janet. We had an awesome outreach. We, I was coming back from a Warrior Notes uh, conference, which was awesome. But my mind, all, if you know me long enough, I'm already thinking about the next thing, okay? Like, I know we have an outreach this Saturday, but I'm thinking, okay, we're going to have a book bag outreach coming out. We need bouncy houses out here. Like, I'm already thinking a couple months ahead, okay? I'm thinking what we need. You know, I saw something. I'm like, we need that in our, you know, out here. Like, I'm always thinking ahead. But I was praying. I was like, Lord, how can we reach more people? It was just a quick prayer. I shot it up. How many have just had a quick prayer before? You're like, you know, things are turmoil's going on, and you just shoot up a quick prayer. And this is what the Lord said to me. I said, um, I said to the Lord, how can I reach more people for you? And I heard a simple phrase from the Holy Spirit. And he said, acts of kindness. And I said, wow, that's amazing. Isn't it awesome where, you know, God's voice can be loud, but it also can be a still, calm voice, right? And I'm on the plane with hundreds of people. And 
all this turmoil is going on, and I just shoot up a quick prayer. And how, I mean, the creator of the universe, you know, gives us the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit says, acts of kindness. And I'm like, wow. With all this turmoil going on, I had the, the king of kings and the Lord of lords inside of me, and he could speak to me. Amen. Isn't that awesome? But it's just funny to me because, like, you know, I'll be praying in the morning and, and, and speaking in tongues and going after God. And I hear his voice, but it's not always, you know, all, all the time and, you know, stuff like that. But then in the middle of all this stuff going on, the Lord's like, okay, I'm going to speak to you now that, you know, you're not really focused. But, you know, so it's just kind of funny how God does that. Um, so as soon as he said that, I looked around and I was like, you know, have you ever been on a plane that bell rings like ding? I'm the first one up. I'm like, I'm up and I'm, I'm still sitting there like, no, 10 minutes. But I'm always the first one up. And I thought to myself, I said, you know what, what can I do? So I stood up, and I looked around. I had some uh, people to my left, uh, or, sorry, people to my left, two people sitting beside me, two people to my right. And one lady had a mask. I could tell she didn't want to talk. I was like, okay, no problem. You know, do your thing or whatever. And then um, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to get their luggage because I'm tall. I can just, I just, because I'm, you know, t- I, when I stand up, the luggage is like right here. And I said, ma'am. Well, the lady with the mask, I said, uh, which bag is yours? And she goes, she, you know, I couldn't see her face, but, she, but I could tell her eyes were like, why does he ask me this? I said, well, if you want, I can get it for you. And she goes, she totally changed. Like, her face just flipped. And I said, I'm already here. I'm already standing. And, you know, I said, I'll get it for you. So I grabbed the, his bag. I grabbed her bag. I was grabbing everybody's bag. I was just, you know, going down, grabbing people's bag. And it was so amazing because everybody was, you know, all getting, you know, it was late. It was super late. And everybody was stressed out. Everybody was like, they're thinking, man, I got to get my bag now. But just that little act of kindness, just grabbing those bags, people's countenances started to change. And I was like, okay, there it is. Because the Lord spoke to me. I was like, okay, there it is. I'm, 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 I'm hearing you, Lord. You know, have you ever, you've read the Bible before, but where Jesus, like, keeps saying to the disciples, are you getting this? Do you remember that? Are you getting this? Sometimes the Lord does that to me a lot. Like, are you getting this? My wife does that, too. She's like, are you getting this? Yeah, well, I'm getting it, Janet. Okay. Uh, but immediately, I uh, started to think about Jesus, right? Jesus is our ultimate example. He is the one that we look to, that we live our life for. We're Christians, Christ-like. So I started thinking about all the things I read about Jesus in the Bible, right? Feeding people, healing people. And then I came to this conclusion. Everything, all he was doing was acts of kindness, okay? How many times did you read in the Bible where Jesus preached and he saw the crowd and he said, um, he looked at them and said, uh, the Bible says he had compassion on them and he said, feed them. And they're like, the, the disciples are like, we ain't got no fit. We don't have, what do you mean feed? I'm like, but as soon as Jesus saw that, right? And the Lord showed me this. Every time that Jesus had compassion, there was an action, and the Lord showed me that compassion is really love in action, okay? When you have, man, I felt that. When you have compassion on someone, something flips inside you and there's an action, amen? So think about that. When Jesus had compassion, and you go read it for yourself, every time that he would preach, it always says uh, that there was, you know, he, came, he had compassion. And then as soon as he had that compassion, next verse, uh, he told him to feed the people. He, he healed that person. He had compassion, uh, and he said, you know, he's not dead. He's, he's alive, you know, all these things. But I noticed it's compassion is love and action. I was like, man, that's good. But basically, Jesus, and I kind of, Janet likes to watch The Chosen a lot, and this is not a commercial for The Chosen. But if you watch Jesus, he literally was just walking and run into people, right? And he always met that person's need. But what he was doing was acts of kindness. Does that make sense? And I was like, wow, Jesus' life is just nothing but like random acts of kindness. And, but that really ministered to me. I was like, you know what? This, this is going to be good. This is, so I hope you get this tonight, what I'm trying to say here. Uh, you heard about Saturday we had our uh, Easter, Antioch Easter celebration. Um, and, man, it was amazing. There was like. Uh, I want to say a thousand kids, 1,200, 1,500 kids just running around like crazy, screaming, all this stuff. And we had a little booth there. Uh, we had our uh, warrior van right there parked in there. With the, I had the QR codes so everybody could see them, you know, so they could take their picture of the QR codes. And we, we gave out uh, Game Boys, ear pods, 
Um, what else did we give out? Bikes. Yes, cookies. We have gave out so many cookies. Ellen's so amazing. Yeah, hair stuff of the moms, nail polish. And this is what people were doing. They were coming to the table, and they're like, I know it's not April Fool's, but is this a joke? I'm like, no, this is for real. And people were, people were like, do we got to pay for this? I was like, no, this is free. This is for you. But what all we were doing was doing acts of kindness, right? So we had this little spin wheel, super fun. They would spin the wheel, and wherever it would stop, they would win something. Um, and I'll never forget this little girl. She's um, spun the wheel, and I think it was, uh, um, what was the, uh, it was like a little game thing, a game boy, I guess. And she was like, oh, my, this is, or she was telling her mom and her, all her friends and all that. And then um, we had one bike left, and it was kind of towards the end, and this little girl came up with her mom, and I said, hey, uh, I feel like we should give that bike to that little girl. And so we ran over there, and we said, how would you like to have a bike? And she goes, what? She goes, where's it at? I said, it's right over there. So she ran around the table. Her mom was with her. Her mom was like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. And, she, and this is the coolest thing. She said that she was just uh, wanting a bike or something like that. Uh, but I'll never forget, it's ingrained in my mind, the little girl, when we told her it was hers, she was like, like it was so, it just, oh, it just melted me. Of course, I'm a dad. And, but she was like, what? Like, she was just so pr- surprised. And I was like, that little girl will never forget that. And all we did was an act of kindness. And now that girl will have a thing in her, what do you call it? Uh, memory thing? Memory core yeah, memory core, core memory. So she's going to remember that. When I was little, I went to this Easter thing. I was getting eggs, and somebody gave me a bike. Um, but we did so much of that. We gave out so much stuff. And it, what was funny was people were coming to our booth, and they're like, are you guys in charge? We're like, no. And we had people say to us that we gave out the best gifts. Like out of, every, out of all, I mean, there was a bunch of booths there. And out of all the booths uh, that we had the best gifts, and I was like, you know what? Yay, Antioch, you know, because you guys give and tithe and stuff like that. But, you know, it's going to good things. Uh, but it was, it was just so amazing, and I was like, this is how you reach the lost. This is how you go after the kids. This is how you go after the teenagers. This is how you go after the adults. This is how you go after the single moms, the single dads. Amen? And I love what Kevin says all the time. When you help, when you help a child, the angels report you. Okay? And I just, I, I just had this vision of all these angels because we were giving away, like, hundreds and hundreds of stuff. And I just had this vision of, like, angels going, you know, just everywhere, like, reporting us, reporting Antioch. Uh, you know, to the Lord because there's so many kids. It, it was just, it was, it really blessed me. It was one of our best outreaches um, that we ever had. We gave out tons of cards. Uh, we actually had a stack of cards uh, where people wanted more information about our church. And I don't know if the ladies are here, but there's two ladies. Man, they're like evangelists. They're like, do you need food? Here's a card. You know, we got food every Saturday, you know, every other Saturday. And I was like, man, they're just going all the way through there. Uh, so it was really amazing. So I want to read the scripture, 1 John 2, 6. If you want to turn there, you can. You, you don't have to. It's all right. Um, 1 John 2, 6. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. All right, 1 John 2, 6. Whoever says he lives in Christ, that is, whoever says he has accepted him as God and Savior, should, as a moral obligation, walk, and conduct himself just as he walked and conducted himself. Isn't that powerful? I mean, we could pretty much go home right now, right? We're supposed to walk as Jesus did. And the Lord started showing me that this is how we reach these people. This is how, you know, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it. Because I used to be one of them, so I can say it. But gone are the days of you being on a street corner and telling people they're going to hell. Listen, I used to be one of those people coming out of the bar, messed up, and somebody's telling me, going to Jesus. I'm like, thanks, man. You just confirmed. I already know I'm going to hell. You know, I know I'm not living for God. I know I'm going to hell. So I, I just really believe that those days are over and God is doing a new thing. Amen? Where we're sharing the love of God and we're not condemning people. Now, I do believe this, like there, there's people out there 
they proclaim the word of God, I'm cool with that, right? Because the word of the Lord doesn't come back void, and you're pushing back darkness. But people just on the corner, hey, coming out of the bar, you're going to hell. Listen, I did outreach one time. We had Anna in a stroller, and there was a certain bar. I'm not going to say it on YouTube to get kicked off, but let's just say it wasn't kosher. And they were throwing bottles at us, like, and, and Anna was in a stroller. I was like, this is stupid. I don't know why I'm doing this. And, but I learned, right? Um, but I'll never forget when, 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 I, when Kevin started describing to us, you have to um, have an avenue for people to hear the gospel, okay? And I was like, okay. He kept saying it. I was like, I, I'm not getting it, right? But when we started feeding people, it flipped for us, even Antioch. Instead of people just, and I love Antioch, I, I love church, people come to church, that's great. But when we, because we would go out on the streets and do evangelism, but we didn't give anything out. But when we started going out and giving out the hot dogs, I started seeing a shift in people. And I was like, okay, now I'm getting what Kevin's saying. Okay, now I'm getting it. It's an avenue to turn their hearts, right? So acts of kindness do that same thing. And I want you to think about something. Um, Ian, I'm glad you're here now. I want you to stand for a second. How many appreciate Ian? All right. This guy, and he would probably punch me if, I, uh, if he knew I was doing this, but I have to do this. Um, when we first moved here, uh, we moved here. I'm saying this for a reason. We moved here with one truck, one SUV, and everything in the back of our truck, and I, we had a king-size mattress on top of it so it wouldn't blow out coming down the mountains. It was wild. I, it's an act of God we got here. We're talking about act of kindness, but it was an act of God we got here. And I think uh, the truck blew, we, get, we sold the truck or something, and the SUV blew up or something. And these guys, Ian and Kelsey, they had an extra car. I'm about to cry to think about this. And he came to us and said, man, uh, me and Kelsey, we have an extra car. Would you love to have it? And I was like, yes, please, we need a car. And, bro, I want you to know that act of kindness really shifted something in us. And to you, you just had an extra car. But for you to do that, something shifted in us. And that car got Janet through four years of nursing school. And we, you were driving that thing. I think when you gave it to us, I don't know how many miles on it. But when it finally died, how many miles? 387,000 <laughs> 387, miles we, we drove that thing. So, man, I just want to applaud you. Thank you for doing that. And you can sit down now. Thank you, brother. I, I wish Kelsey was here, but tell her. I'm, hopefully she watches this. But that one act of kindness, giving us a car. It, Dana, you learned to drive in that car. Yeah, she learned to drive in that car. She, it was funny because she would get it and clean it all out before she got it and took her friends. It was so fun. But she actually learned how to drive in that thing. Um, but it was a, that thing just wouldn't die. No, it would not die, which is a good thing. Uh, but, Janet, we were going, how many miles do you think you're going a day to nursing school? Yeah, 50 miles. Yeah, 50 miles a day for four years. So you can add that up, uh, all the math geniuses in here. But that thing, I'm telling you, but that shifted. What that did was that brought our family closer to the Lord, didn't it? Because we were praying, we were crying out, God, we need a car, this truck, because I was doing roofing at the time, I think, and we only had one vehicle because the other car blew up. So we're like, God, we need a car, we got a car. And I'm not sure the Lord spoke to you, whatever, but God used that, and that act of kindness shifted something in us, and we're like, okay, we're called to be here. You know, when God calls you something, he starts confirming it, right? But that act of kindness, man, I want you to know, really shifted something in us. And if you're here, and of course you're here tonight, but those of you who are watching at home, I want you to take just a moment, and I want you to think about something that somebody did for you and how that made you feel, okay? And maybe it was money, maybe it was a watch, maybe it was a purse, whatever. Or, um, but how did that make you feel? I guarantee you, I can speak for you, and you grab this microphone, it brought you closer to the Lord. How many can raise their hand and say that? Those of you home, raise your hand. Okay, I'm no, just kidding. Um, but that's, that is the key. When we do acts of kindness, something shifts in people, and it draws them closer to the Lord. 
because when you do that, they give God the glory and it brings them closer to the Lord. Isn't that amazing? The Lord is showing me, like, man, this is so good. I'm going to get this CD tape, rewatch this. All right, here, I got so much going on here. Let's see. Oh, here it is. It says testimony, Janet. All right, come here, Janet. I want you to hear this act of kindness. So Sunday night, it's the front one, right? Yeah. Sunday night, um, I got I I got a text message from a dear couple in our um, church with two small kids, and um, she said, "Hey, sorry to text you so late. Um, do you have a minute for a phone call?" And I was like, "Sure." And so I called her, and they've just been so discouraged and. Their kids just keep getting sick and sick and sick and sick, and then they'd have a week where they weren't sick, and then another one would be sick, and and all these things. And she's like, "We really just haven't been able to come since like August." And I was like, "I know we've been missing you guys." And and she said, "I just feel like it's just one thing after another. It's like a plague." And I said, "Well, we gotta break that junk." Like I remember back in the day, <laughs> we got these coffee mugs, <laughs> and I coined this phrase. Sometimes you just got to bind that junk. (laughs) And (laughs) Mike made it into a coffee mug. But anyways, it's so true. And I said, I said, girl, let's just pray. And I just went after it in my bedroom. I'm in my pajamas. I'm ready to go to bed. But I'm binding the devil off this family and spirit of infirmity down to the cellular level. I'm like getting all nurse on them. And, you know, I'm like build your immune systems. I, I gave them some tips on what they can give their babies and them to build their immune systems and stuff and but when I said I meant I mean she's just crying on the phone and she's like Janet you just encouraged me so much we will be there on Sunday and it's just like it was that was nothing like I'm in my pajamas I'm just on my phone but it brought so much hope and so much encouragement and so much to where she she could take a stand against the enemy of what's been going on since August. And it was nothing for me. And it's, it, I think his point was, you know, an act of kindness doesn't have to be something so huge. It's a simple phone call. It's a text to one of the girls at the pregnancy center. Hey, I was praying for you today. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe you just texted me. Like, it's something so simple. But to the person who receives it, it is a lifeline. It's like you throw in a, a life ring and they have just gone overboard and you're literally pulling them out. Isn't that amazing? So I did that on purpose and uh, I'm going to have Anna share one here in a second too so you can get ready. <laughs> and Jamie. Um, the views went up when the ladies grabbed the microphone. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but I, I did that on purpose because a lot of people think, okay, it's Um, evangelizing, uh, feeding people. No, acts of kindness can be just what you just heard, right? And I wrote these down here. Um, It can be uh, buy a a stranger a coffee. On Sunday, um, I saw, uh, not pat myself on the back, but I want to tell you why I did this. I saw uh, a single mom and her kid about to get a coffee, and I jumped in there and I said, I'm paying for that. She goes, what? I said, yes, I'm paying for that. And I'm thinking, I am not missing this opportunity to help a single mom. I'll tell you that right now. So I jumped in there, and I've learned that from Kevin. You know, you help people who cannot pay you back. Not that you can get something, but those opportunities, trust me, I'm not going to miss those. Um, but, it, but I put that, uh, buy a stranger a coffee, right? Send a postcard to a loved one. Volunteer and give your time to charity, right? Saturday morning, we got an outreach. We need all the help that we can get. That's giving your time. That's an act of kindness. Amen. Uh, bake something for your neighbor. Treat someone to flowers. Tell your coworker they're doing an amazing job. And I wish Rachel was here tonight because she's so good at that when she books all the worry notes stuff. And as soon as we land and we start meeting all these people that she's been on the phone with, she's like, you're amazing. You're, you, you really helped me. And, you know, they're just going doing their job, just going about it or whatever, and they may be having a bad day. But she's like, you were an amazing um, when I, when I needed you to call me back or you text me, you text me back, you email me back really fast, you know, just encouraging people, right? That's an act of kindness. So she's so good at that. So, Rachel, if you're watching, you're amazing. All right, let's see here. Oh, listen to this quote by John Maxwell. I love this. People don't care how much you know 
until they know how much you care. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to read that again. John Maxwell. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Isn't that powerful? So when I learned this, when we started feeding people, I'm telling you, something flipped in my mind, my mentality. And I'm just going to tell you, out of all the years of me doing ministry, and again, it's not about me, but I got saved out of some radical stuff in 1996. And I hit the ground running, talking to my friends about the Lord, all the drug, like just everybody, just anybody that would listen, I would tell them. And we had a, got saved out of the revival. We would have. A hundred people at the beach. We'd have a hundred people downtown just taking over the air, just witnessing for Jesus. And we would see some fruit. You know, there was a lot of fruit because there was so many of us. And they would come to the revival. And then later as I moved, I would still do outreach. But I didn't see as much fruit. And I'm like, what is going, like, what am I doing wrong? Like, I, I have some fruit, but not what I want to see. But I was doing that. I was, do, I was the street preacher. I was the guy standing up saying, have you ever told a lie? They say, yes, I've lied. Have you ever stolen something? Yes, I've stolen something. And then I would say, so you just told me that you're a lying thief. And they're like, yes. I'd be like, sir, you need to repent. Ma'am, you need to repent. And they're like, yeah, I know. I'm a sinner. I already know that. But I wasn't seeing a lot of fruit because I was beating them up with the word of God, right? And then years have went by, and I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, man, I've been I've done a lot of good stuff, but when we started giving out the food, I saw a whole huge harvest of souls uh, being saved. And now, you know, there's so many people coming. We want to, like, we're throwing the net out, right? And we're catching the fish. But now we want to get those fish and we want to clean them, if that makes sense, right? We want to get them discipled. They're coming for food. Now we want to get them discipled. We want to get them to classes. They come in with, you know, they get the free coffee. But now we want to get into Sunday school classes, right? We have the van. We need a driver for the van. We got people that want to come to church, but they don't have the transportation. When I'm here, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to drive the van. I'm going to go pick up people. If I got to do it, I'll do it. But if anybody wants to drive the van. Um, so we got people that want to come to church. We need to pick them up. We got outreaches that we want to do in trailer parks where there's hundreds of trailer parks. I'm like, we could just pull up the van and the grill just start feeding people when they come, get prayer. Like, there's all these things I want to do, right? But I'm telling you, when, when you really catch this with acts of kindness, something's going to flip in your life as well. Amen? And I want to tell you, and any time a preacher goes like this, right, they're pointing at you, there's like three fingers pointing back at him. But I'm just going to be honest with you. And actually, I hate when pre preachers say that too. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm thinking, have you been honest the whole time or just now you're being honest? Um, but I'm going to shoot straight with you. Um, I've been missing it with my family, my own family members, because I've been telling them, man, you need to get saved. Jesus is coming. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. He's going to come. You see with my life. You see my family. You see the fruit. We're living for God. You need to get saved. And now I'm like, you know what? I've been doing this thing the, whole, the wrong way. And I want to encourage you, if you have family members, if you're watching online and you have family members that aren't saved, maybe, what is, what, what's that saying, insanity? doing the same thing, expect, yeah, so if you have been, I, for me, it's been 1996, I've seen some of my families get saved, some of them died, some of them in jail, but there's a lot that still aren't saved, I'm like, I've been doing the same thing the whole time, I'm like, I need to flip this, I need to do something different, I gotta do something different, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, how can I, you know, Amazon's amazing, you can order stuff on Amazon, so I'm thinking, okay, what does my uncle like, he likes motorcycles, all this stuff, so I'm, I'm thinking to myself, he likes Harley Davidson's. Maybe I'll get some Harley Davidson shirts. And I'm like, just send it. And he's going to be like, what the? What? Chris just sent me shirts. What, whatever it takes. And then I'll call him and be like, hey, did you get those shirts? Yeah, I did. Well, I just want to let you know that I love you, man. I haven't seen you in a long time. Did I get the right size? Yeah, you did. And it starts a conversation, right? It's an act of kindness. But something flips inside him and says, you know what? He's not just that crazy preacher always telling me to get saved. And something flips inside of him. Amen? So I'm telling you, I want to encourage you, because I'm going to do it. And I want to encourage you to do that for your family as well. If you've been doing the same thing for all these years and it's not working, let's, should we switch it up maybe? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to switch it up. So if you want to switch it up, you can switch it up with me. Romans 2, uh, Romans 2, 4, we've been talking about this. The kindness of God leads you to repentance. 
And this is what I love about the mercy of God. Second Peter three, nine. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. You know, I when I started uh, doing classes with Warrior Notes and listening to Kevin, I realized that hell was not meant for us. Hell was meant for the devil and his demons. I used to think, you're just going to die and go to hell. No, that wasn't, hell wasn't even meant for us. That's how compassionate and how slow to anger God is, that that, it, that wasn't even made for us. And that's why he's slow, right? You see, I, I've seen these people do all this stuff, and I'm like, how come God hasn't got them? I'm like, if I was God, you'd be, like, zapped already. But God is so awesome and so uh, compassionate and slow to anger. And I'm like, all right, Lord, I need that in my life. I need to be more compassionate. I need to... Uh, See people as you see them. Amen. When we, so when we do outreaches, we display the love of God. We are God's. I wrote this down. We are God's trophy. OK, God. And I, I know for me, you can speak for yourself, but God plucked me out of darkness. I'm talking. About he snatched me by the neck, snatched me out of darkness put me in the light, got saved, got discipled, and now I'm his trophy. You are his trophy. You are showing the goodness. You are displaying the goodness of God. When you go to work and you walk in there, you're the goodness of God. When people see, you know what, um, they're not cussing around the coffee machine. They're not cussing uh, around the water machine. There's something different about them. Yeah, you're God's trophy. And God, I'm going to tell you, I'm just because the Lord was telling me about this when I was preparing this message. God is going to begin to open doors for you, for people in your family, people at your work where you can show acts of kindness. And you're going to remember Chris up there pointing his finger at you. You know what? Chris said acts of kindness. OK, I'm going to I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to do an act of kindness. Listen, I, I don't know anybody, maybe a couple Satanists that I've witnessed to, but I've never had anybody refuse a Bible especially a nice Bible. Maybe God is calling you to um, go buy a beautiful Bible, right, for your coworker. Hope that's not my phone. Okay. See, God just confirmed it, the phone call. I think my phone's on. Thank you, because my phone's on. Okay. Um, but maybe God's calling you to buy a beautiful Bible, right? And then maybe you work at a place where there's cubicles. Well, when that coworker gets up, maybe you just take that Bible and you just put it there and you put it on a note. Uh, you are valued, you are loved, God wants to speak to you through his word, and you don't even tell them. And they just walk up and be like, where's this Bible? I guarantee you they're not going to refuse that Bible. There's all kind of things you could do, right? I'm just saying Bible. Um, when people come in here and we give them food and prayer and we give them Bibles, I haven't had one person refuse a Bible, right? And so it's amazing. So that's one thing you can do. But there's so many acts of kindness. And I want you, when you leave this place tonight, I want you to pray and say, okay, Lord, how can I reach the people around me? How can, what are acts of kindness that I can do? Listen, my wife can sew, she can knit, she can do whatever, wherever she puts her mind to, she can do it. I, I can barely brush my teeth, but she can do all this stuff. So if you're talented, right, if God's giving you a talent, God's wanting you to use it. Jamie, just kidding, Jamie does, Jamie's awesome at that, uh, always doing that. Okay, here we go, Matthew 5, 16. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. And it's not the express, so I just, my heart is so full, and I'm trying to get it out. But God is just um, challenging me to take Antioch to another level. And again, it's not about me, because I, and I'm learning this, I'm reading a lot of John Maxwell right now. But a leader is only good as the people that they have, okay? Yes, I can say stuff, Mike can say stuff, but if you guys aren't getting it, and you're not doing it, we're failing, okay? So we all need each other. We're all knit together. In the body of Christ, you're my brother and Lord. You're my sister and Lord. We're knit together. We're the bride of Christ. Jesus is coming. But right now, the bride's not ready. We got to get the bride ready. But we, the harvest is out there. We got to go get the harvest. Amen. So we need each other. And that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. When we let our light shine... People take notice. Amen? All right, Jamie. 
I got you down here. I want you to tell them what happened the other day. I'm just breaking it up. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have another story too. Oh, whatever you want to do. Well, we which one you one. want? I got plenty of stories. Okay, sure. Which one you want? I like stories better as well. Okay. Well, was that today? What day is it? That was yesterday. Okay. Yesterday we had a meeting and then we had a bunch of things we had to go do after. So we went to CVS and we w went up to the checkout. One checkout, there was like a transaction going and then the drink was left there. And I was like, that looks suspicious. But I just went to the other one. And then we were getting something and whatever. And then a little boy runs in with a handful of coins. And it was his transaction. He was just trying to get like a drink. And... He was putting his coins in, like he's counting. He's like, looks real nervous. His face is getting a little flushed. And he's got all, and me, me and my dad were both watching. We were like, this is a good opportunity. Yeah. If he doesn't have money, you know, you know what we're going to do. Me and him think the same way. We're like when we're out together, we're like, okay, who's going to do it first? Am I going to do it? You're going to do it. And we're like, oh. we look at each other. Anyways, um, so he's putting his coins in and he's like, and you can tell he's internally panicking because there's he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's there's a couple of people behind him. And he's like freaking out. His face gets more and more red. Like he's just a little boy in there by himself. And my dad's like, hey, would you said, do you want me to pay for this for you? It was like 20 cents left. Yeah. It was it was like he just 20 cents. It's not that big of a deal for us. And I'm sure he's like, oh, it's just 20 cents. But you could tell like this little boy was like oh my gosh, there's someone that sees me, there's someone that cares, and he just was in there by himself in the middle of CVS, get trying to get his little drink, had 20 cents short, and someone saw that, and they, someone cared, and someone paid for it with, with his card, he didn't even use coins, he put his card in, it messed up, and then we had to do it again, and it was a whole thing, but he was like, it, you could tell, like, his, just, li like you said, did people's countenance change. They're just like, because I feel like people don't do stuff like that anymore. Yeah. People don't do little acts of, uh, like, and if you do see that, it's on social media. People do it for views. Yeah. I don't ever oh. see it in real life. I literally never see it in real life. It's always on social media. And so I feel like we need to do it more without expecting at words of affirmation back because, or like, praise back because like one time I went and paid for someone's gas but I didn't go around telling people oh I paid for someone's gas today like I didn't do that I was between me and the Lord because I was like Lord I know you're going to reward me for that later and whatever and the lady didn't even she put like five dollars on it and I was like whatever but it was still me doing it that I feel like would bless her enough but I feel like just people don't do stuff like that anymore because they always see it in social media but I feel like those videos are fake like they just, they're too good for it to be real and the people's reactions. And I feel like if we do more of that, people are going to realize that there are still good people in, in the world. And if you connect it to the Lord, you're like, you know, Jesus told me to do this today. Like that little boy, you're like, Jesus told me to do that. This 20 cents is from Jesus. And he is loves you and he has a plan for your life, whatever. If you just slip that in there, and like the little girl that we gave the bike to, if you be like, oh, Jesus gave that to you. And they, they connect the act of kindness to the Lord. And like he said, it brings them closer to the Lord because of that. Amen. That's good. That's really good. No, it's okay. Yeah, and it's funny because I, like she said, he was, I mean, he was panicking. Like he was, y have you ever put your coin, one of those machines where you put the coins in, it's going, and you're just waiting like, okay, $5, $10, okay. He had put all his money in there, and he was like hoping that it was, count it was counting down. But I could tell he was down to his last penny. And like I said, he's here, and there's all these people behind him. And then there's one here. The lady got up and took off, so I, I just kind of stepped in there. And I look over, and I look back, and all these people are annoyed at this little kid. They're like, you know, where's you – know, I'm thinking, you know, I don't know if you've ever been – never mind, I'm not going to say that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Okay. So anyways, <laughs> um, so all these people are getting annoyed and stuff, and I'm like – I got you. So I looked at him and I said, I said, you doing good? The guy knew what was going on. He goes, yeah, but his, like Jamie said, his face was getting red. And I said, is this your drink? He goes, yeah. And I'm doing this for a purpose because I want all these people behind it to see it. And I said, I got you, man. So I went like that. And, 
he snatched the drink, and but he had the biggest smile on his face, the biggest smile. And he went to take off. I said, hold on, man. I said, you need your receipt. So I'm still waiting, making these people wait, get the receipt. And then um, he ran out, and then I looked back, and I could see that people were like, man, I just missed an opportunity. I could have helped that little kid. But they were annoyed. I was like, what's going on? Anyways, so we walked out. And I looked at Jamie, she looked at me, and she goes, yeah, you got your card out quicker than I did, because she was going to do the same thing. So we always have this funny thing that we do. Um, yeah, we, we're, always, we're always looking for opportunities. Which was funny was, we were so busy that day, and we were, I think we were eating Chick-fil-A, driving, like, we were just, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to pull in here real quick. It was just an inkling, right? I pulled in there, I got exactly what I needed, and then I went right to the register, and, and the Lord just, and I, because I saw him run in, the kid run in. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, you know, yeah, Kevin talks talks about this when he went to heaven and the Lord didn't judge him, but the Lord showed him all the little opportunities that he missed. You know, we think it's uh the big crusade that we preached or um you know that you know uh you struggle with that your whole life or whatever. But no, God like did a rewind and showed him where he could have gave a kid a dollar or he could have give a homeless person a, a meal. That's what the Lord showed him like in a flash, all the opportunities that he missed. Like, every, you know, every day there's opportunities, right? Like if I would have done that at CVS, I'm sure someone else would have. But I got we got we got reported. Um, but it, I'm telling you, that kid smiled. I mean, I was like, I could have said, you know what? I'm going to adopt you. He, the way he smiled at me, I was like, I'll just adopt you. But what's funny is we went out, and I saw him run to the car, and I, I heard him telling his parents, and I just played it off like I did. I just kept walking. Like, I didn't want them to, you know, say thank you. I was like, no, this is just, I want him to receive that. Anyways, so speaking of that, one of the things we do here. Uh, at Antioch, and those of you at home as well, you can do this as well, and I'm going to fly through this, is we do bags of, acts of kindness, bags, right? So in this bag, here at Antioch, we have, home, we make homeless packs. Yeah, open it up real fast. All right. In there, we put spoons and forks in a different Ziploc bag, so it's sanitary. We got goldfish. I'm going through this quick, but people always email about this. We put tuna fish in there. I always try to put stuff in there that you can pop a top, right? Because if you see a person at the light, you can give them a bag, and a lot of times they'll eat it right there. They've been out there all day in the sun, all this stuff. Um, so we always try to do stuff that has, like, pop tops. Like, this has a pop top. Yeah, uh, this has a pop top. Vienna sausage. Uh, fruit with a pop top. We try to do crackers, like peanut butter crackers, something to give people strength because they've been out in the sun all day, uh, more granola stuff. Okay, in here we put um, toothbrushes, uh, shampoo, uh, soap, um, you know, because they're out there. They could use that as well. And always, I always recommend if you do homeless packs, always put socks in there. They always need socks. Every person I've ever run into uh, when we're feeding people, they're like, do you have socks? So always put socks in there. Of course, water, Gatorade, whatever you want to put in there. Thank you. And then the most important thing is a track, right? So our kids at Antioch, and we have some of the kids here tonight, they do things like this. They make little hearts. And on the heart, it says, we prayed for you today. Isn't that amazing? So they get that track. Somebody loves you, right? And I want to tell you, because I've done a lot of evangelism, again, I, know, I feel like I'm talking about myself, but I'm not. I'm making a point, is I've had so many people tell me, I've even, I've even witnessed the people that said, I was about to go kill myself, and you came and talked to me about Jesus. I've had that happen so many times, where I was like, you know, I just felt led, just talk to some. I talk to anybody, it doesn't matter. But, but I've had so many people say, um, thank you for giving me this. This morning, I was just praying, God, if you're real, please some, send somebody to me today. Show me a sign. Bring somebody to me, and you hand them that bag, right? So I want to encourage you. All it is is a Ziploc bag, and you just put whatever you want in it, okay? 
But definitely put a track, definitely put socks, definitely put water, and you can put whatever you want in there. But I get a lot of emails about that, so that's how you do it. That's how we do it. And if um, we put a bunch over here on the table, our church on Sunday, they go over and they grab them. They put them in their car, and then when they see somebody at the light or they see a homeless person they can get to, um, they'll give that bag to them. And that's an act of kindness. I've never, I, I don't think I've ever, I don't remember, I've never had anybody refuse a bag. But when I do is I, I'll go like this, I'll extend it, and as they go to grab it, I'll say, listen, man, I want you to know that Jesus loves you, has a plan for your life. I know you're going through a difficult time right now, but there's books written in heaven about you that God wants you to fulfill, and you're going to do that in Jesus' name. And they'll go to grab it. I'm like, are you hearing me? And they're like, yes. I'm like, all right, man, God loves you, and I'll give it to them. That's in, in the car, if I could pray for them. But I've had grown men. I give them a hot dog. I've had grown men, I give them a hot dog, and I've had them, you've been with me, they're crying in my arms because I gave them food, and then I told them about Jesus. Remember that one guy was just weeping and weep, but I was like, it was wild. It, that stuff, it, it, uh, it'll do something to you. You think you're having a bad day until you go and you see a street person that's covering up with cardboard, it'll mess you up. Kim, you came one time, remember? That was amazing, wasn't it? Changed your life, didn't it? Yeah. Um, anyways, so just a plain hot dog, right, or just a hot dog is an act of kindness. We can all do something. I'm going to end here in a second. But we, how many can do something? All right, those of you at home, you can do something. And listen to this scripture here, Proverbs 19.7. One who is gracious to a poor person lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his good deed. I wrote this. I got to say this. I've had so many people say, I'm not giving no money to no bum. I'm not giving no money to no street person. I'm going to warn you, don't ever say that to me. Don't ever say that to me. Because I, and now, I'm, I don't say you just give out $20 bills to everybody. But what you do is say, hey, listen, I know you uh, need money. Um, here's $5. But before I give it to you, I want to let you know that Jesus loves you, right? You, you give it, but when... Before you hand it, you give the message, and then you can give the money, right? And you just read, you just read right here. If you want to miss out, God says, whoever lends to, the, lends to the poor lends to the Lord. So you don't want to miss that opportunity. All right, let's see here. Let me just read these scriptures just to get them on the tape here. Isaiah 63, 7. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord. According to all that the Lord has bestowed on us, according to his mercies, according to the multitude of his loving kindness. Hmm. Luke 635. Love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be the sons of the most high, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Ephesians 432. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave us. And this last scripture right here. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance. Man, I felt that. Let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And I wrote here at the end, if the Son of God practiced acts of kindness, I think we can practice acts of kindness too. Amen? All right. I hope that bless you. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for everyone in this room. Lord, I thank you that uh, everyone that's watching online as well, Lord, I just ask a blessing upon them right now, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that they have given up their time, Lord, uh, to tune in. I pray for those that are here tonight that have given up their time, their Wednesday night to come, Lord, to hear a message from you. Lord, I pray that your word will go down deep, Lord, in their hearts. Deep in their hearts, Lord. 
deep, deep in their hearts, Father. And Lord, I pray that you would begin to speak to your people about acts of kindness. Maybe for a neighbor, maybe for uh, a coworker, maybe for a family member. Lord, and Holy Spirit, you are our teacher, you are our guide. You would teach us and guide us and direct us on ideas that we can do to reach people for you, Lord. That is the number one thing on your heart right now is the harvest. Souls must be saved in Jesus' name. You're coming back for your bride, and the bride is not ready. Lord, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you would give people dreams and visions of ideas, Lord. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name, speak, Lord, for your servants listen. Thank you for your son, Lord, that went all the way for us. And, Lord, we're going to go all the way for him. And we're going to do this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in, uh, clicking in uh, on the YouTube there. And we'll see you Sunday uh, at 10 a.m. God bless you.